Welcome back. This video explains the omitted variable bias. This is a common problem in regression analysis that is caused by omitting an important explanatory variable from your regression model. If that occurs, it will bias all your estimated coefficients. Now this video will explain how to detect an omitted variable bias and most importantly how to fix it. The Ramsey Reset test actually tests for nonlinear relationships but it is also very powerful to detect an omitted variable bias. To understand the link between the two um, you have to have in mind if you omit an important variable from your model well, you don't know what you actually omitted. You forgot about something important, so how would you be able to test for it? Now, the idea of the Ramsey Reset test is to include higher powers of your fitted values or your independent variables. And if this addition to your model increases the predictive power of your model, it is an indication that your model is incomplete or it is an indication of a nonlinear relationship. Now we will move into Starter. All right, um, so I opened um, a Starter do file. I call this omitted variable bias. I want to work um, on income data. Now this is a subsample of the living cost um, survey and food survey in the UK and the data is stored in this um, file here single person household data so what I did is I restricted the sample to um, single person households um, to simplify the analysis yeah so we want to open this and as always we clear data in memory just to be on safe side it's also a good idea to put quotation marks around. We don't, strictly speaking, need this here, but it's a better idea if you have some, some spaces in between your name. Um, and then we have to change directories. So again, I just click up here, get the path, copy paste that, and use the change directory command. So this should open my data set. So let me just run this first and see what happens. I just save it. I run it and it should open my data set. So if you just do um, a browse command, we see the structure here. So we have income and then we have an age description. Now age is usually numeric um, um, up to um, the point of um, 80 because we, we don't go beyond 80 in this data set. So we have here weekly income figures um, and um, the age of the person in the household and it's a single person household so we know if there's income this income is linked to this particular person. Good, we move back now into um, our do file and start um, here with um, a standard regression model. Of course, um, as discussed in, in other videos, it is always a good idea to look um, and to explore the data further. And um, of course, um, that uh, we skip here because we want to focus um, on, on our omitted variable problem. Before we do this, um, we do a little transformation. Um, again, I stress I did a video on transformations of variables. Um, and in the case of, um, of looking at at income data, income data tends to be um, a skewed distribution. It's, it's very likely that you have some outliers, so some households with very, very large incomes. If we do a k-density, again, we have covered this already um, in the video on transformation and on exploring data. Um, we will see the distribution is definitely not not symmetric. Yeah? So you have quite a few outliers here on the right hand side. So people with very, very high um, income. So um, it is plausible and useful quite often to actually do the modeling on the um, log transformed income. So I would do this first. So I do a generate command here ln underscore income. You can call this as you want. And I take the ln of income. 
Yeah, so this will um, make the distribution look better. Um, and then I move now into um, the regression model. Let's do that. And I just want to be really, really simple here. Just want to explain income using age. Um, you would assume that over um, your lifetime, income definitely changes. So it's very likely that there is a significant relationship. Let me run this um, one more time. Um, you see the distribution. Let's go back to the output. Um, and here's our regression model. Again, of course, in our um, session on regression analysis, we spoke about how we interpret um, this output in a lot of detail. So I refer to this video if you um, need some further details. Now what we can um, see here is that uh, we have um, quite a low adjusted R squared, about two and a half percent. So it's not really massively impressive. However, age is a significant um, variable. It's a negative impact on, on income. So based on this simple linear model, you would assume if people get older, the income level drops. Now, this is, of course, only yeah, partially plausible. It's certainly true for a certain age, um, but usually income peaks um, at, um, at a certain age, mostly in your 50s, depending on the country and depending on your profession. All right, so how can we continue? Um, now, if we want to test this regression for an omitted variable bias, what we do is we use the so-called OV test. Now, if you don't know this command, I recommend using the help function and have a look at the OV test. We can move into this and uh, we get um, a description um, of um, the um, test that is applied. It's a bit further down here. Um, it tells me not an awful lot. I have to go to the actual paper to get further details. But basically, there are two different types of tests. One type, which is the default type, uses the fitted values and takes powers of these fitted values um, into the right-hand side of your regression equation and re-estimates the model. And if there is more predictive power, it would reject um, the null that the model does not have um, any omitted variables. The alternative is to use your right-hand side variables and to specify that in an option. Um, in this case, for us, it would be anyway only one variable that would matter, which would be age. Yeah, but we can try both. Um, it it um, tends to agree, and it, um, there shouldn't be a significant difference. Yeah, so we do the OV test after that, and then we do the modified version with right hand side variables, and see what happens. So I run these two. And uh, looking at the outcome, you see here the null hypothesis, the, the model has no omitted variables. Um, looking at the p-value, um, and as you know, if the p-value is below 0 0.05, you can reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, whatever the specification we use, um, we can definitely reject the null that the model has no omitted variables. Good. So this would indicate um, potentially two problems. We don't quite know which one is, is the one causing it. So it could indicate that we omit an important variable from our model. Now, this is plausible looking at the low R squared. We don't explain much, honestly. We explain 2.5% of the observed variability in income, which is almost nothing. Um, or it could be a nonlinear relationship. Yeah, so it could be, um, and this is plausible here, that um, age has a nonlinear relationship with income. So how do we proceed? Um, the most plausible way to continue is to um, create some higher powers of your right-hand side variables. In with our case, age. So we need um, higher powers. So we go from to the power of two, power of three, maybe higher. We could do this, of course, now uh, line by line, but we already learned about loops. So it would be nice to practice loops. Let's do a for value loops. So we do for values. Um, we use the index i. We start at 2. So power of 2, we go up to power of 3. Yeah, we just see how it goes. Use wavy brackets, go to the next line. I use an indentation, but you don't have to. It's not important in starter. We are not in Python, but I, I think it's quite nice. 
Then we generate a variable which is called age underscore and then i, I refer to i here, and um, note that I use these quotation marks. Yeah, and these quotation marks are important in starter syntax. Yeah, so this is very different from um, Python, for instance. Now, the first quotation mark, you find this on a normal keyboard board below the escape um, button. Um, and the other one here is the normal single quotation mark. Yeah, so depending on, on your keyboard, um, um, you have to have a look for this. Um, so this is how you would indicate um, that you refer to i as the index in your four values loop. So here we refer to age and then we go to the power of um, i. And again, I use the quotation marks. Okay, So this will generate um, a variable age underscore 2 or underscore 3, which is age to the power of 2 or 3. And most importantly, we have to close the loop. Yeah? So that should do it. We can see what happens. So after you have done this, we um, rerun our model and keep testing. And first, what you would do is you run this with power of 2. And now, later for comparison, what I also do is I use here a predict command for fitted values. I call this fit2 because I go here to the second power. Yeah, we will later look at this relationship to see whether this is actually a nonlinear relationship or this is a, an omitted variable problem. Good, I run this one more time. Let me just um, comment this out because I don't want to see um, the kernel density again. Um, and I just want to run this now. Let me do that. Um, okay, variable 2 not found. Okay, that's of course the case because I forgot the underscore. That happens. Let's do that. And what you see is once you include h to the power of 2, so higher orders, they might not be significant. Yeah. Now you have to ask yourself whether the p-value is actually reliable. Yeah. I give you a hint. We have covered this um, in the, the video on multicollinearity. Yeah. The issue here is that you use h and h to the power of 2. By definition, h and h to the power of 2, they are not independent. Yeah? They are related, obviously. Yeah? So if h goes up, h to the power of 2 goes up, because these two are interrelated. It's not um, in, in, a, in a linear sense, it's, it's um, in, in a sense of well, power of 2. Uh, in terms of hypothesis testing, you cannot rely on the t-test and the associated p-value. So to test um, whether h has an impact, you need to do the following after regression model. You type in test h h2, which conducts a joint hypothesis test. So that's the so-called f-test. We talked about this before um, in the session on regression analysis. And as you can see, the joint hypothesis test, whether both coefficients are jointly equal to zero, this can be rejected. The p-value is below 0 0.05. Yeah? This is very different from these p-values. Yeah? So have this in mind. Um, these p-values you see above, they are affected by um, the relationship between h and h to the power of 2. Now, the next thing you observe, of course, is that our Ramsey reset test is still complaining. I can still recheck the null that the model has no omitted variables. Yeah? So what do I do next? Well, the next thing you do is you go into higher powers. Yeah? That's the next thing you do. And we just do that right now. Now, we go here and we also save the fitted values 3 into H3 and we see what happens there. So you run this um, further and see what happens. And um, now you see everything even turns here significant. But again, it's not reliable. You have to do um, the joint testing. Um, it is um, looking promising um, because now you see that uh, the p-value is definitely above 0 0.05. Yeah. So this seems to be an improvement compared to your original model, we again save here the fitted values and now the next step is I would like to visualize it. 
Yeah, because by visualizing it, we understand is it actually nonlinear relationships that are at, at play here, that are the dominant factor here, or is it maybe something else? Yeah, so that's the next step I would like to take. Now to visualize this um, in a in a useful manner, um, I would um, focus. Um, on um, the um, average observation for each and every age group. Otherwise, um, um, the plots, um, they don't look really um, massively convincing. So what I do next, um, and this is again really useful, is we use um, summary statistics, basically. Yeah. So I do some summary statistics here um, by using the, the so-called collapse command. Now, this is very useful, the collapse command. So what collapse does is it actually changes your data, si uh, data set in memory. So if I do collapse mean, I basically take my current data set and I um, summarize all the data using the average observation. Now this can be useful in particular if you want to visualize um, data and you have a large um, large uh, number of observations and you might have lots of outliers that might distort your picture. Um, I um, have to specify the variables I want to um, keep in the models. I want to focus on age um, and um, I would like to uh, focus on my two model fits. So the fit with um, power of two, fit with power of three. And I want to group this by age. So I want to have an age specific um, um, income level, so basically the, the average income of a 50-year-old and then the average model fit of a 50-year-old um, where I permit two um, powers or where I go to order three polynomials. Yeah, so that's the idea. So after we have done this, um, we can do a two-way chart. We have seen this before and just do line charts on my LN income and on age, we might use um, LP as uh, an option where I can modify the line pattern and just do a dash here because otherwise it's hard to see what happens. Then we do another line chart with our fit um, two and um, over age, and we do another one with our fit three over age. And here we might select um, a stronger color. So we go for color red um, and um, balance, hopefully, the brackets. OK, so I run this now one more time and see what happens. And here is our outcome. Let me just move it here. Um, so that's our outcome. Looks quite nice. Yeah, so we have here the dashed line. The dashed line is the average um, income in, in log value for different age groups. Um, the um, brownish looking one is your model with power two. And you see it's almost like a straight line yeah, because the coefficients are very, very small um, on the um, age to the power of two. Um, and then when you look at the red one, so that's your cubic one. So it goes power of three and you see quite a nice looking model fit. Yeah? So it, it's much more close to the dashed line, it seems to cover it quite well. Now this would indicate that the reason why Ramsey research has indicated a problem here is indeed there is a nonlinear relationship going on between age and income. And this is of course a classic problem um, and you will always come across this if you um, analyze um, labor um, data, income data um, in particular. Okay, this is all I wanted to cover. I see you in the next lesson. Take care.